Welcome everybody to the Gecko Pod. This is episode 78 of the Gecko Pod. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Harry with a uh I was gonna say with AJD Reptiles. My name is Harry with Zero's Geckos. We have AJ, AGD Reptiles, and today we have our friends Jenny and Justin from Red Rock Geckos. What's up, guys? How are you guys doing? Hi, guys. Welcome. What's up? What's up? So we, um, Jenny and Justin, we met you guys in person because um, AJ and I, this was, was this Anaheim last year, right? 2022. Okay. Yeah. Um, two years ago. I yeah, think. two years ago. Possibly. Yeah, I, I forget when, but it was an Anaheim you show. You guys bailed then, us out big time. You guys bailed <laughs> us out, yeah. I think uh, Brett was supposed to get us tables, but somehow that fell through. Um, and then so AJ and I were kind of scrambling. And then uh, you guys... Uh, you put a post out, right, Harry? You put a post I, like... I think so, right? Like if Justin, anybody needs help or like if anybody has any tables or... Oh, man, something. I forget. I think you put <laughs> out like forget, an Instagram Or, or maybe out. I reached out to Justin and Jenny directly. Did I, 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 I don't remember. Yeah. yeah. And, it, yeah, and it, just then, worked, it, it just worked out because normally we're between like three and four tables. Yeah. And we were going to bend with a family member. And he bailed on me like the day before. So I'm like, uh, how are we going to fill this extra table? And then you and I had talked or something yeah. and, it, and we just made it work. Yeah. It yeah. You guys too. offered it to um, AJ and I and then like, oh, hell yeah. Like, so we had an extra table that we, we crammed in on. AJ and I yeah. shared like no, was good, 100 though. something geckos on that table, 200 something geckos <laughs> on the table. Um, but it worked out and it was great. It was great vending with you guys next to you guys, taking one of your tables and so yeah, we're ultra appreciative of you guys just taking care of us and housing us. So that's how we met. That's how we yeah, met. Was right. that our was that our first California show, Harry? Yes, yes, it was. So we started we started on kind of a disorganized foot, but <laughs> after that, we were good. We were good. Yeah. Well, you yeah. guys have been back now a few more times. I think mm -hmm. two or three yeah. more times since then. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and it's been good. Yeah. We've had yeah. our tables pro pro properly set up. Because <laughs> that was Pomona. And then you guys did the Anaheim. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 It was a Pomona show. And then you guys did Anaheim the next show. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it was and good. Um, it was good. So you guys, you guys do, you guys have been doing the shows for a long time, right? How long have you been going to the super shows? Four years. Four, oh, four years, years ago, we had our first show in Las Vegas. Yeah. And that wasn't, we were brand new, one table, two small boxes, and just leopard geckos. But yeah, that was like kind of pitiful. But then we started like putting money towards having a nicer setup and everything like that. But then we did the super show in California, and then we do them in Utah and still Las Vegas as well. Hmm. Okay. Okay. Yeah, you guys, your table is pretty nice. Like, um, you guys deck out. So, you guys always have like a three or four table setup. Is that usually how it is? Yeah, we're right. Three or four. Yeah. Okay. It depends. You know, at the right now, we'll probably always need two to three. But at the beginning, I mean, even one was enough for us. But yeah, especially mm -hmm. now that we have so many, I think we'll be at three to four tables yeah. from now on. Okay. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of as like the dry goods stuff has has increased, and you have the isopods, and you have different yeah. stuff going on. Right, we keep a little section for the kids with their like oh. stuffed animals and stuff too, so they can that. make some money during it. But yeah, the isopods is almost a full table now too, so we're wow. just expanding. Yeah, definitely. So you guys do good at, on those isopods. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> we do really it, well. It blows, wow, it blow my mind because. A couple years ago, she started getting them, and <clears throat> same with plants. For those, the plants and the isopods were her thing, and I mm. never understood spending seventy five hundred dollars for a plant or isopods. <laughs> and, and I tell her, I'm like, Jenny, these are the things we would flick on the sidewalk as a kid, but everybody had them at the show, and so she started investing in them. And we started there's, trading there's a couple geckos. Shows, <laughs> there's shows that she's we brought home more <laughs> isopods than we did geckos. <laughs> That's funny. So you know, I think. I, so so what I think at the shows, it's, you know, like sometimes the geckos are like 100, 200, 300 plus, right? The isopods are a more, people want to spend money at shows. That's why they go, yeah. right? Yeah. If you, pay, if you pay the entrance fee, you want to buy some. Yeah. So I, I feel like the isopods are a good medium where it's like, okay, 50 bucks is pretty nice for isopods. It's right? a lot of price point. Yeah. You get some rubber duckies. You got, you know, like it. So I feel like it's a good entry to buy something to, for people to scratch that itch. So you guys you yeah. just kind of hit it on the head there. <laughs> Yeah, that's pretty. That's pretty good. Yeah, I, yeah, I don't know. I think, um, I think, like AJ and I, we always just just have crusty geckos on our tables. 
Well, you oh, know, you do great at that, and everybody comes for your crested geckos. I mean, we started off not even with crested geckos, so yeah. now it's yeah. definitely our it's gaining popularity for red rock geckos. But I mean, for a long time, it was just leopards, and then the yeah. the crested geckos were what four about four years ago four years we ago. started. Uh, yeah, halfway yeah, through. Yeah. 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 Okay. How long how long have you been breeding uh AFTs and leopard geckos prior to that? So back back in the I bred leopard geckos when I was like 13, 14 years old. Hmm. I had always had reptiles since I was a little kid. But when we got back into it the second time, um what, we eight years ago. About eight years ago, I took the I took the girls. They were small down to a reptile show in Vegas, and mm. we were holding animals, and that kind of restarted the itch. I didn't have any reptiles when I moved out to Vegas from California, wow. so I found a breeder that was kind of going out of business in on Facebook. I hit her up and told Jenny I was going down to Vegas to pick up one gecko, and I came back with an like eight or nine. And, and some tubs and some tubs yeah that's not eight or nine is not too bad yeah yeah it's not too bad it's always been one of those all uh, you know ask for permission later type of thing and, yeah, yeah ask for forgiveness yeah, yeah. Ask for forgiveness one of those situations so then we started breeding them that was about eight years ago yeah just messing around you know trading the babies to pet shops for supplies type of things and then it just started to take off it kept growing and the super snow eclipse with the leopard gecko yeah. kind of boomed our business back about eight years ago they would sell the second we posted a picture of the newborn hatchlings and that kind of put us on the map i'd say a yeah. little bit was yeah. that and then we another situation where someone was getting out of the hobby had crested gecko <clears throat> and Justin decided he would just see, right? And yeah. So another breeder friend in Vegas, they, they <laughs> had about as many as we did. She got out of the hobby and I went down and picked it all up and she ended up having two crested geckos. And mm -hmm. I, I'd known about them. I had no interest in them. I had seen them. I'm like, okay, these are cool. I gave them to another buddy. He gave them back. He didn't want them. And I'm like, okay, I'm kind of stuck <laughs> with these things now. This was five years ago. Mm. And that's how it all started. Once I housed them and kept them for a little while, I'm like, okay, these things are really cool. Yeah, but it yeah. took a minute for, for them to catch on. Yeah. Yeah. So how, how big is your crested group now? Oh, I would say we probably have 50 adults. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I would say we're somewhere in the neighborhood of 50. We're producing, I think this year will be about 250, 300 for babies. With okay. nice. the geckos. Yeah, yeah, with cresteds. So are you skewing heavier cresteds than um, leopards and AFTs? This year and last year, yes. Okay. Just because, I don't know. He was investing everything in crested geckos. But the yeah. markets also swayed that way. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. the, the boom, the boom that, you know, the COVID boom for cresteds, it had always kind of been like that for leopards and fat tails mm -hmm. and some other species. Mm. And lately, it's not. It, it's it's, it's so been down. it's been difficult to move them. Yeah, but the okay. crests okay. are still moving at a at a steady pace. So we've slowed down on on you know the the reptiles with heat tape. Yeah, and and uh, picked up more in the new Caledonian mm -hmm. spe species. Yeah. So a AFTs and and leopards are th the market you see is definitely <laughs> like a lower than cresteds in terms of people aren't buying things like what is it seems strange to me I, I just feel like the afts i mean is it just that they haven't had a new gene in a while because they were super hot and super expensive for they, yeah. they were for not that long ago you know and one thing one thing jenny and i will do and so we'll throw things on morph market auction and just let it go see where see where it ends up at and i mean you know, if you throw one of these things on auction, you'll get 60, 80, maybe a hundred bucks for a $300 more, $400 mm, more. Yeah. Jeez. You know, and that just realistically, that just shows us what market, what are willing people, what are people willing to pay to get this, you know, animal from me to them? And, and yeah. it's 60 or 80 bucks, mm, but, yeah. but we're not noticing that with crested geckos. Yeah. Yeah, you know, they're willing to pay more the closer to market value or what <laughs> us breeders deem as market value versus um, what what the leopards or fat tails 
we're going for at their market value. What's I'm just curious because I don't know a lot about AFTs. What is the difference, or what is the setup, and how is it how is it different than leopard geckos? Almost almost identical to leopards. Um, mm -hmm. You can keep them in a bioactive, and you can keep them in racks with heat tape. Okay. Um, the the main two differences, a um, couple differences, is the the fat tails want to be kept a little bit hotter. So instead of keeping them 87, 88, 89 like leopards, you're going to keep them more in your low 90s. Um, okay. You get better feeding response that way. The other thing, um, they don't they don't have as many eggs. So you're going to need more fat tails to produce the same amount mm. of eggs as you would leopards. Yeah. Leopards um, are a little bit more prolific. Mm. And then there's, there's not as many genes. Yeah. Yeah, I, so I do like that little more limited i think they're I just like wait, something's gonna pop out eventually <laughs> oh and, they, and their diet too so yeah. so the the fat tails really in our experience we have a really hard time getting them to eat mealworms and that's kind of the easy staple for leopard geckos just yeah just putting a mealworm them. bowl in there and the fat tails are more one of those species that they want to be triggered by the movement um so mm -hmm. crickets and dubious yeah mm -hmm. so and they eat dubia out of a dish they they will, but mainly once it gets out of the dish and starts running, that'll trigger the feeding response. Mm. If it's sitting there in the dish, it doesn't really do much for them, is what mm. we've noticed. They want to catch something running, kind of like the knobtails do, or some of the other species of geckos. Mm, knobbies. Yeah. Do you keep a lot yeah. of knobtails? We we have a couple pairs of them, but <laughs> that that's a passion project. Ah, uh, yeah, you'll it's harder to keep. Yeah, I, you'll never make money on that. They will sell well and quick, but they are <laughs> finicky as all heck. Like you, you put a lot of input <laughs> in for the output. <laughs> yeah, that's so cool. exactly. So I want to so pair like, just. That's a, just that's, a pet. Nephris, that's a nephris amie, and I mean, mm. on a good year, I get four eggs out of her. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Mm. Okay. So it's yeah, I see. They're, the they're really, they're really cool them. looking. They're they're great species. I they're one of the species that made me start into geckos. Um, hmm. But they egg bind so much. I've hmm. lost I've lost a good amount of breeder first year female breeders ready to breed, and they egg bind. No, no. And there's nothing the vets can do for them. Hmm. Uh, yeah. yeah I should get one just as a pet. I want an AFT as a pet and a knobtail as a pet. I should get some from you at the next show. <laughs> <laughs> Look how pretty they are. They are. Uh. <laughs> They're a little smaller than the fat tails, and they got like a little chubby kind of cute face yeah. from. Yeah, I saw. I've seen AJ's at his place. He has a couple knobs. Yeah, yeah. I've got. I've got like three pairs of AMI. Okay, and do you have good luck breeding them? Um, no, not really. But I also put like zero effort into that. Yeah. <laughs> I feed them. I've missed so many eggs out of my AI. It's it's hard hard. They don't they don't like lay boxes. Mine don't. No, so mine cool. don't mine don't want to lay in their lay box either. So no. no. That was like the um the spiny tails that we had, the Stravurus, the mm -hmm. Sailors. Mm -hmm. We just gave up on them. I couldn't I you couldn't sold them out the last year. Yeah. <laughs> How much do knobtails go for? Like if you buy one, so um, like four fifty unsexed. Yeah, okay. yeah, four fifty five hundred for an unsexed. Like like the MEA or MEI, they're uh, females eight hundred to a thousand. Yeah, okay. pair, pairs are probably like fifteen, fifteen oh, wow. for okay. a pair. Yeah, I know Steve Sykes sells sells them on his table as well. Yeah, but it's never uh, never really looked at them, you know. But they're so cool when you look at them. Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely, if you bring them to the show, you get interest just because a lot of people don't know about them. They've never heard of them. You definitely get to tell them about the knobtails because 99% of the people have no idea. And then there's the people, the 1% that come just to make sure we have them or not and then buy them. We always sell out if we do. When we do have yeah. them, they're, we never take them you back home. Them. Uh, yeah. nice. That's cool. So they still sell. That's kind of cool. Yeah, they definitely do. They're like little uh, what pit bulls though. When you go in there, they always yeah. They have so much attitude. They have and puppy. They're like, <laughs> yeah, puppy they're like got a temper for sure, but they don't. They have never seen a bite, but they want to show you that they're not cool with you even opening that. 
Yeah. <laughs> I love I really I really like AFTs. I wish that they yeah. were like I, I feel like everything kind of has cycles. Yep. So it's probably oh, not yeah. over for either leopards or crested or leopards or AFTs. It's just, you know, one of those times where people need like there was a stall out in leopard geckos until black knights came and then that in you know invigorated it and yeah. then so i think everything just kind of goes through those cycles yeah and that's why i, I think it's why. important they probably just keep you know di diversify keep them all and you know sometimes what some you years, like yeah yeah selling them for a little less but then in a couple of years it's going to go back to even higher possibly you know depending on what comes out with genetic wise Oh, it's us. Oh, there, there it is. There we yeah. go. Oh, that's 2023. So which was it? Does it say the date? That's July 2023. You're, you're, 20, okay. you're, yeah. yeah, yeah, last year. I was going to say, in regards to that, I remember back in the day, <clears throat> like, Vi I remember there was like a big rally on Viper geckos the last like year or so. Year, Viper year geckos, and yeah. And scorpion tails. Like, and scorpion tails. Like, at least Viper geckos. I remember. I don't know, 10 years ago. I mean, you could not sell them for $10. Like <laughs> you couldn't even sell them for $10. There was so many of them. And then fast forward, like not even that long ago, six months ago, people were paying like 125 for them. I'm like, what? Yeah. You know, it's, and it's, it's just, there's cycles where people stop breeding things because they think, oh, they're not worth anything anymore. I'm not going to breed it. And then they, the, there's no, supply and then things increase like it's it's nuts it's nuts how some of that stuff goes like your dactylodes are are hot again right now like really hot and yeah. I'm trying to think i mean there's a bunch oh, of stuff cave get cave geckos are really hot right now again too and like there was a time where cave geckos you know they were like 75 dollars a piece and now they're like 500 dollars a piece so mm -hmm. It just it things go in waves in, and Yuri's in a lot the of these smaller, things. Yuri's are the smallest species that we keep. Okay. We don't keep anything smaller than that. If for some reason we got a me. wait list and we had three at the last show and they sold to one person and people were asking for some reason they're really popular. We're excited that we have recently, what, two years ago got like our first couple years ago. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Yeah, they're awesome. Look at those little guys. <laughs> <laughs> they are so cute. Do you have do you have the do you have um you know the Viardi, the Agricola, Symmetricus, or just Occidentalis? So we have the Occidentalis and the Velardis. Yeah. Okay. I don't I don't have the Agricola or the what's the other one? Symmetricus. Symmetricus. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. Those ones are super pricey. <laughs> yeah. Symmetricus. Those ones and the, still, yeah. Yeah. Which one keep you guys too. Care? What's that? Which ones do you guys have? I have the VRDs. Yeah. I have all of them, but I only have a male Symmetricus right now. Okay. Yeah, honestly, I, I only keep the VRDs because I know they're the, probably the most popular one, but I don't know as... They're the most variable in a lot of ways, too. Oh, okay. In terms of, like, it's striping and banding and color. Yeah, you can get different looking ones. I know Occidentalis has a lot of variants, too. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just I'm not bar. sure if people are into those other ones as much, you know. So, see, our oxidentalics are really light based. They mm -hmm. don't don't show much color. The ones that we have. But the uh, okay. have some so, like oranges. Yeah. And some of the babies have a lot of oranges and yellows. Mm -hmm. They're really pretty. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, my mine have a lot more banding. Like the coloration, it, it kind of pops a little bit, and I like the orange accents, and so. Yep. I do like that about the um, the ones that I have. And mm -hmm. then there was a guy that just hatched like a melanistic one. Ooh, yeah, didn't he? I just had seen that. Yeah, Jackos. Yeah. Oh. So, Occidentalis, yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, there's things coming out of them, which is exciting. Yeah, definitely. Get in on it now. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. I don't really want to make a super cap of Yuri's. I think no. I, I'm good on that. But <laughs> so cute, though. My daughter takes any of the ones we're keeping to grow out. She keeps them in her rooms. Our youngest does, and she <laughs> feeds them, and she misses them, and she loves them. Aww. She doesn't really handle them, but 
She just wants to see them daily and check on them. <laughs> That's so nice. Gaining popularity like with the kids. The kids yeah. love them. Yeah. I mean, they really are. I'd say they're like the perfect pet gecko. The only thing that holds them back sometimes, I think, is the size. But they're so yeah. calm. Yeah. And they they're not them. jumpy. Yeah. yeah. If they were a little bigger, I think they they would be even more popular. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah, no. they're they're fun. Yeah, they're fun. Yeah, the kids like holding them because they don't they don't shoot like crested geckos. Yeah, <laughs> so. little fingerlings. I've never yeah. had one drop a tail. I've never seen yeah. one drop a tail. Yeah, I I, really I pinched one tail in a door and it dropped it. Did it? <laughs> um, yeah, but it regrew it really fast. I don't even yeah. know what it looks like without a tail. <laughs> no, I had I had one that was just tailless, <laughs> like a frog butt for a while. It was pretty funny looking. Because <laughs> they're like half tail. They're like more than half tail. Yeah. 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 It was an adult male, too, which is funny. Oh. It's funny. Was just said... like back legs, bulge, no tail. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's funny. So you guys have been, you guys have been, uh, sounds like around four to five years ago, that's when you guys started to like sell routinely and you started to do shows. Because you, you guys, are you guys doing it full time? We run three small businesses and Red Rock okay. Gecko is one of them. Got it. Okay. Yeah. His plumbing business is not small. He's full time. He oh, barely okay. has yeah. time for geckos. But about four or five years is when I promised that I would get down and dirty and clean yeah. the geckos. And I was always doing shows, but I was like, okay, mm -hmm. now I'll promise to clean and get down there with them and feed the geckos. So he has a few hours each night that he's down there and then about an hour each morning about 5 30 to 6 30 in the morning he's down there but about three to four days a week at the in the night we're down there like full clean and everything yeah but he mm -hmm. he works probably 40 to 60 hours a week just doing plumbing and, and the geckos so wow, he's really yeah, busy. yeah and he'd love to do it full time but right now yeah. with the market i don't think i mean Hmm. We were we did about a show a month until ki the kids started school. So I think we did about seven shows. And right <laughs> now we have to kind of step back because the kids are in school and not okay. missing as much. But mm -hmm. I mean, with that, we were definitely since we added the shows. I mean, it's a very successful part time business. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was yeah. go for go the whole time. Yeah, yeah. Every weekend we were, you know either listing on Mark Market or doing a show, basically. Yeah, that's a yeah. lot. It's a lot to keep up with. Yeah. Especially yeah. if you have a job. I mean, it's like, yeah, that's, that's your that's your crazy. entire extracurricular <laughs> time is spent on that. Yeah. Absolutely. He does nothing else, really, besides geckos and plumbing and also <laughs> spending time with us. That's where, has, it, has it gotten to become like a grind where it's less enjoyable yet? Or just still still okay for you guys? No, the gecko it's good. It, it it gets when it gets hot out here in Nevada and in, in Vegas and it's 120 degrees outside. Yeah, that's not as fun going down there at night cleaning geckos. But yeah, yeah. So most of the time, you know, it's still always been a passion project. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. you know, now that the whole family's incorporated into it, you know, it it's became fun. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Are, are you guys in Vegas proper? No, we're okay. about 40 minutes north of it in a small like farming community. Okay. But Vegas mm -hmm. is kind of our main hub. We ship out of there. Yeah. And we're right in between St. George, Utah, and Vegas. Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Nice. That's nice. Out of the hustle and bustle of Vegas. That's yeah. Good. Yeah. yeah. Very small town. The kids both have like a few hundred in their school. Well, one of them has maybe a hundred. The other has like 300. It's very small town. Maybe 4,000 people total. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's full cool. town. That's yeah, nice. yeah. The yeah. West, the West Coast shows. I know you guys. You haven't done any shows outside of like West Coast, right? No. Not yet. Mm -hmm. Maybe one day. <laughs> the vibe out there definitely is different. Harry, you've been to Tinley. You've been to Flora Fauna, mm -hmm. and then you've done like West Coast stuff. How would you describe the vibe, like the difference between East Coast, West Coast, in your experience? Oh me? Um, yeah. 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 Um, I think I think you would have a better pulse on that because you you're pretty heavy on the East Coast, and then you know you started coming out to the Cali shows. I haven't done as many out there, just Flora Fauna, and you know I've been to Timney. Mm -hmm. um, but well, it, the the big difference is there's way more 
there's way more gecko breeders on the East Coast. In my opinion, mm. like yeah, if you go true. to a, if you go yeah. to a show, if you go to a show on the West Coast, there's I feel like a lot more diversity. And in part, depending on where you are, either on the East Coast or the Midwest, I mean, it's just all gecko breeders, <laughs> mm. I, <laughs> which is yeah. which is good and bad, because if you actually look at your if you break down your customer who buys geckos, it's other gecko breeders. <laughs> right. So yeah. there's pros and cons to it. If you're if your goal is to sell pets, um, then the West Coast is awesome because there's like not a lot of breeders. So there's there, you know, you can kind of do do better at at that point, you know, being more of a, a first time pet and educator kind of that kind of business does really well out there. But I think the, <laughs> the like selling high end animals, the, the more saturated the market actually is better mm, yeah. because that's your customer for those items. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, like with, a Tinley or a Florafauna or a you yeah. know white. I do plane. think within the last year, year and a half or so, yeah, um, you know, I see a lot more gecko breeders. You know, like you come out, Brett comes out. You know, um, Tiki Gek David comes out again, coming out west. So yeah. we see a lot. We're beginning to see a lot more gecko breeders out here. In the and you even have some coming from Korea sometimes. You know. Oh yeah, we saw. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they haven't been back yeah. though. They just came yeah. that one that one year. I think we'll show. see. I think we'll see a couple at Tinley in a couple weeks. Yeah, is that Korea. normal or is that something new? Last year there was a couple. Yeah, <laughs> you guys yeah. have as much foot traffic because I know some of the there's a lot. Uh, yeah, it's about it's the same lot. or more. I it's really hard to tell because the room I think is a little smaller. Yeah, so it feels like it's more. But I think part of it is the room and the eye. Like it's in smaller. California, I like how Super Show does it, where their aisles are really wide. Yeah. So you not. never, you never feel like you can't get from point A to point B yeah. if you want to go walk to the bathroom or you want to go see your friend's booth. Like yeah. if you want to do that in Tinley, if you're on one end and you want to go to the other, like it's two hours. <laughs> like, you, can't, you can't get there, and it's <laughs> and so the crowded. Room, the room yeah. is less big than than like the Pomona room. Yeah, Tinley, you're walking, you're always going to be like rubbing shoulders with people. It's just like because, so crowded in there. Like, I think the California shows probably have, what do you think, Harry? 20 foot aisles? They're big. Yeah. They're much bigger. 20 foot aisles. I swear the aisles in Tinley are like six, six and a half, yes. okay. eight feet wide. Yes. Yeah, it's it's like uh, when you're, which, so the roads at Tinley, like they, they, so cramp, they jam pack everybody. So like you can, it's maybe like three people wide. It feels like three people wide. You know, yeah. from one table to the next within that aisle, which is not it's very much really space bad. Out. Yeah, You're just not a, go move I feel around. like if, if there's a fire in there, everyone's gonna die. Like it's, <laughs> and there probably there probably is, you know, gonna be a fire. There's in gonna there be some, some sort of violation with so many people packed in there. It's crazy. I know it's so <laughs> bad. Like AJ down in your area, you guys have shows a lot more frequently than we do out here too. I could I could probably go to three shows every weekend if I wanted to. Yeah, it's crazy. And I don't go to any of them. And we don't have <laughs> you know, ours are ours are pretty spaced out, I would every say six months. Every, yeah. every couple months, That's you know, big Vegas is twice a year, yeah. Utah is twice a year. But a couple of the breeder friends that we have on the East Coast, they're they could go to shows every weekend and then they have one day shows. Yeah, we don't have any one night. day shows by me. It's all oh, two days. Yeah. There's one day shows in like New York and and Northeast, but yeah, everywhere else it's two days. Set up for one day. <laughs> I know. Oh, you like I would, one day. Trust me, I would love to do a one day show because down yeah. here the culture. So on the West Coast, the culture is Sundays. In my experience from vending out there, I do better on Sunday than Saturday. Yeah, and <laughs> here. I will sell zero on Sunday <laughs> and then so you sell awkward. everything on Saturday, literally zero. Like you might as well not even go. So many people have the sentiment of like, why am I even here on a Sunday? Mm, right. You know, we're on in California. It's the opposite where the, the sales are at least split between Saturday yeah. and Sunday. Yeah. It's not like that. Yeah. Like at Tinley, it's Friday night and Saturday. Oh, and then Sunday. Good. Yeah. And then, Sunday, if you, I feel like Sunday is the day to kind of go and work out some trades. If you maybe everybody that didn't get to sell certain things, 
might do some trading on Sunday, stuff like that. But as far as just like cash transactions, it's it seems almost all of it's Friday, Saturday. But I think yeah. part of it is because Sunday, like people travel to Tinley and people yeah. like go home on Sundays, whereas yeah. California um, or, you know, shows out West, people are all low. Most in, in general, yeah. are people are wrapping their stuff up by by Saturday night. Like yeah. that's, that's kind of like the end of it. And Sunday, if you're still there, you're probably a vendor or you're just kind of coming to wave goodbye and leave. Yeah. They've <laughs> run out of money by that point. Yeah. So <laughs> it's really interesting. I don't I don't know why there's such a uh oh oh so you were talking about the shows out here, how there's so many. So part of that is there's this East Coast kind of show circuit arms race going on oh. where there's there's like two to three promoters that are that are all competing with each other and booking shows in the same market, like the same weekend, like three shows in Atlanta on the same weekend. Yeah. We've two, seen, we've seen the drama. You on know, that <laughs> or there's, you know, there's some random podunk, you know, Fayetteville, North Carolina has two <laughs> shows in one weekend. It's like, they don't I even need it. that hurts the business. And I don't, I sad that they're doing that <laughs> because like get, get it together, separate it, it a little because when we did Pomona back to back to Anaheim, well, we did a lot better. I think partially because you guys were out and stuff like that. A lot of like people that bought from us the month before then went and bought from you guys the month after. Cause we did, was it Pomona in June? Or I, heard that, I heard that show was just Anaheim. bonkers. Yeah, Anaheim yeah. in August. So the one with the fish tank and all the birds and everything yeah. in Pomona, yeah. we, it was crazy. Then a month later, it was just not as good. But I yeah, saw a lot of some pods. <laughs> yeah. No, it's interesting yeah. that the... Uh, well, I mean, I know why they're doing it. And this is kind of getting into the show politics of it. But I, so, Jenny, what you're saying, like, well, why, you know... Why are they doing that? Or it sucks they do that. It's they're yeah. not doing it. They're not thinking about the vendors at all, right? They because they basically their their model is they sell enough tables to pay for the venue, and right. then every attendee through the door is profit to them. Yeah. So yeah. even if they even if they get enough vendors to vend the show, pay for the venue, and they sell a thousand ten dollar tickets. Yeah. Like they just made, you know, after they pay their staff and whatever, oh, we just made five or six grand. And so they, that's why they have 10 shows going on at once. Right. Spread yeah. over and they don't care how good the shows, the people at the show do. They right. just want people through the door to pay the $10 ticket and make the money. So yeah. it you when you have that mentality, it just leads to a really low quality overall show which yeah kind of is sad, small but. turnout and it, it doesn't even like well with the super yeah. show when you see thousands of people you're like dang this is a big show i want to come mm. back it yeah so good for everybody the the people that are attending and the vendors and then from that drama yeah i've i've just heard that some of the sales are being you know they're half half the money is being made for the vendors that weekend and they'll need to get it together <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I'd much rather out here where I'd I'd rather there be like four to six a year, right? Within like what you know, two in Atlanta a year, you know, one in Raleigh a year, one in you know Asheville a year. I'd rather it be that way where you could actually the same market isn't getting hit like six times a year. Yeah, exactly. And it's then one no town, know one to <laughs> bend because like for us, you know that. The Pomona one was really good, and the Anaheim was a little bit slower. So we're like, we'll probably hit the first one, you know, and not the second. Yeah. But mm -hmm. I mean, like Vegas, it was great both times. They were six months apart, and both were very successful for us. Wow. So, but it was two worth times, it. two times a year in a market that big, I feel like is doable. Like Tinley yeah. is twice a year. Mm. Yeah, I don't see any problems with that. But when you start having like, you know, some of these shows are they're. In within me within an hour, so I can get to Charlotte, Raleigh, you know, where I am, Greensboro, Fayetteville, you know, all these different places. There's probably 20 shows within one hour drive of me per year. Yeah. That's too much. Within one hour. 
I have no <laughs> desire to be a road warrior. <laughs> I yeah. already feel like we're yeah. enough with traveling to one almost yeah. every month. Yeah. <laughs> I just I just think there's too many. And yeah. the reason why there's so many, like I'm saying, is they're making money off tickets. They're not making yeah. money off the vendors doing well. So right. So you guys you guys like the Vegas show, huh? Is that is that a pretty I know I, I think Super Show used to do Vegas, right? And then now it's yeah. Uh, Central we went to the one. Now. So the, yeah. Yes, that's the first time I'd ever seen you guys. Was when Vegas, oh yeah, the Vegas. super oh, yeah. show. Um, yeah. AJ was out there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 AJ had came down. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and yeah. that was um about two years ago, and the super show stopped ago. going there. I don't know exactly why, but now Central Valley does it. I had just heard from rumors from that show that nobody except Brian that he did good. You know, it was uh, yeah. Vegas is sometimes hard to do expos in because. You know, there's, there is a lot of looky loos. There's a lot of window shoppers. Um, you know, sometimes they're right, sometimes they're not. They're, they're a coin toss. Hmm. Is it because it's, or is it a lot of people that aren't even local that are attending the show? Is no, there are a lot like, of, I think it's a lot of locals there. There are okay. a lot of locals coming to just like do something for the day because there's not a ton of family oriented stuff. So you can go and take your kids and like you know mm. check out all the animals but you weren't really looking to buy but i i feel yeah. like that has changed in the yeah. last year with the new vendor or but i mean we on wrap up out of the shows and we go home yeah and you know mm -hmm. there are a lot of vendors that go take their animals to the room and then go to the casino for the night well you're never going to come home with any money <laughs> <laughs> you know <True>. that's <laughs> the other thing with vegas yeah we go straight yeah. home we're not like partying or, or yeah going to the casino or anything but yeah some people might not be making as much with that <laughs> yeah uh, i like to go into the vegas show though it's fun it's fun for me i i've never really gone to vegas and then i've gone twice for um just for reptile shows yeah i've never been other than that but i'm like oh you this is go great to the buffets, we man. can go to all these restaurants <laughs> I, I that's what I liked. I'm like the food's so good and yeah, we yeah. can just walk everywhere. It's so easy. <laughs> yeah, but I uh, I definitely would not want to live there. <laughs> yeah, that's where we're an hour north. But it is nice to. There's a lot to do. You if you, you want to just pop board. in. Yeah, yeah, we go food is do good. products every Tuesday, so I can ship out the geckos. And then on mm. the weekend, if we want to go to Costco or anything like that, we go into Vegas and do our thing. But it's nice to also leave Vegas because it is very hectic there for sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, that's yeah, funny. That's crazy. Um, uh, crested wise, you know, we we talk about you know in general we we like talking about like projects and stuff, and I feel like you guys, you guys hit a pretty good project. <clears throat> Sorry. <clears throat> um, you guys have like this red phantom white pinners that are amazing, right? And I feel like you guys hit a really good project on, on that. You guys want to tell us a little bit about that project? Yeah, so we had had some red phantoms before in the past, and then um, we had a we had a local Vegas breeder who had some of these things, and they were getting out of the hobby, and we kind of went down and picked up most of what they had with this project and then we've incorporated a couple of different things into it as well but they're just these really unique looking red phantoms um some of them get just kind of blown out white portholes on the side or i don't know if you call it snowflaking or portholes but um and then they just get this you know nice pinning that runs up the back of them mm. um they're they're super unique they're really Definitely became one of our favorite things. They've, they've been our main focus for the past couple of years. Yes. How, yeah. many, how many babies do you have from that project this season that you're holding on to? I'm down. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sitting on like 50 or 60 of these little babies. Oh, wow, that's awesome. Nice. Yeah, yeah. So, <clears throat> so I, I've talked about this also, like in whether it's our Palm Lives or I think in our podcast too, our Q and our q a with brian um brian when aj and i did that last one and we i think we talked about how <clears throat> how it's so encouraging to see that a non-morph you know non-sable non-cat non-exantic um animal can sell for so much because you put what you put this animal up on morph market auction right and you yeah. guys like, killed it with this thing this thing was like 
bit up all the way up to like seventeen hundred or something crazy, right? Yeah. And I was like, yes. Every time it was like bidding up, I'm like, I love seeing something like that. Um, that the you know it's, it's been worked on and yeah. has like has that like extra <clears throat> level of care put behind it. Yeah. Yeah, because that yeah. one was what almost that's the one, and it was close almost two years. Yeah, yeah, that, I think they're they're close to about two years. We have some of the first rounds, and we've just been growing them out. They change so much. The you know mm. they have a lot of yellow in them as a baby. The the pinstriping, some of the pinstriping as they start to age out will will develop and get better. Some of it oh, kind of cuts so. back a little bit. Hmm. Just, they don't even fire up until they're almost like a full year until yeah. you yeah. see the full potential of the gecko. Yeah. That's yeah. that's what it seems like for reds. Reds is like you have to hold on to these things until they hit a certain a hit a certain range, like twenty gram sub adult or whatever, and then then yeah. they start to pop more, right? And then you start to see their true potential. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What um for you guys? I you've you've grown a several out now, and when they hatch out, do they have the white pinning or how? How does it look and how does it progress um, from your experience? So, so a lot of it's very yellowish as as a hatchling. The pinning um, and the little spots. The pinning side. and some of the markers on the side are are kind of have a yellowish hue to it to me. Yeah. Um, mm. It's not until they hit, you know, 20, 30 grams till they start to transition over to white. See that, and you can maybe see that that's kind of yellowish there. Mm. But it's not like full pinning but in a lot of the ones we had it, this season do. It's very but they don't hatch with most of them don't hatch with pinning much past white pinning or highlighted pinning much past like 50, 60 percent. And then it fills in later, right? Yeah. It's filling in later. They, I, right now I got about like that. Twelve to fifteen of them that are full pinned right out of the egg. Yes. Wow. Mm. Okay. So, That's awesome. So I would say where they're pinned all the way to the head with white out of the egg? Yellow. It's still yellow, but okay. but it's pinned to the top of the neck with some fringing out of the egg. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Which that's, you know, when Chaos was little, when I picked her up, one of the best ones that we have, she was like that. This one. This, oh, this is Chaos. Yeah. There we go. And, and she had some gaps in the back. It, she wasn't, when I got her, she was just a couple grams. She was just hatched. And, um... Mm. She had a couple gaps in, and most of them have filled in. I think she's got one little break in one of her pins, but for the most part, she's fully filled in. Yeah, she's so pretty. Mm. Yeah, yeah, and the color the color really develops late. I know, you know, reds typically do that, but they really look, you know, kind of bleh until they look good. Yeah, yeah. There's so it's, it's like Dalmatians. You can't sell them too young. Mm. Exactly. It, it's it's. So I've just been kind of holding on to all these. And she's like, hey, people keep asking, sell one, sell one. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely had to push them. I mean, because he was like, okay, we're going to wait till they fire up nicely. And so about six months ago, I'd say they were firing up nicely. And then, <laughs> well, I think we had like six or seven from the seat that we have like that are almost two years. Like that male <laughs> right there, he, he didn't look like that. He wasn't anything. Yeah. Yeah, huh. he didn't have any of that white on his side. He was kind of an ugly duckling baby. Honestly, I would have got rid of him young and and not expected anything from him, and he shocked me. Um, yeah. mm -hmm. So a couple of them have, but and that's what scares me is that it's not that I'm not trying to raise them up to that value. I just don't want to. I don't <laughs> want to regret getting rid of them. Like I should not have sold that. Yeah, that's gonna yeah, that's gonna happen. Yeah, you right. sell one that could have been better than the one you capped or whatever. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, the downside downside to reds, like they just take some time to develop, right? Yeah. yeah. And there's also different I've noticed with the collection that we have, there's different grades to the red color as well. Mm. Um it's totally different than chaos yeah, Zayden. It's like, like my two different. major males, Chaos, or I'm sorry, Azriel and Zayden, they're they're a good dark red, but yeah. they're not they're not a chaos red she's she's got something different her color intensity is just so much more vibrant yeah um but people love the zayden's like blown out port holes and then some people like that didn't bid on the auction said they're waiting for the zayden caliber and they're totally different i guess it depends what you like but i mean hmm. some people obviously preferred chaos and some are waiting for something like them 
and I don't think he'll be releasing <laughs> many like that. Not right now. Oh. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah, they're so free. I like that you have like such a variety of, of um. I mean, within a red phantom, like there's variety within it, right? Like, yeah. You think that you a red phantom is a red phantom, but then when once you bring in the portholes, once you bring in the white pins, which is pretty rare, um, you can do so. There seems like you can do like quite a bit with the look of it. Yeah. Um, yeah, the coloration too. Like you could make some more pop. Some don't pop as much. Yeah, look at the just difference of the those. Coloring. Yeah. Orange red versus yeah. like dark red. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they're super unique. They're definitely one of our favorites. And I don't know. I think there's still a lot more we can do with these. Mm. Is this just the beginning? Yeah. Is yeah. This you know, no, this isn't chaos. No, it's a, it's a baby. Yeah. Yeah. Was, mm -hmm. yeah that's um, one of the babies. Uh, okay. Okay. I've been bad at taking pictures of, of new ones we've had this year. Have you made any like, bad ones yet or are they all pretty cool um <laughs> so so i got a i have a a lily um female that's in this project i've got lily into it a, fa a phantom red lily phantom red yep and and she's about 80 percent pinned out um and you know with some side markers as well like the like the phantom lilies have Mm -hmm. And she's thrown me a couple exanthic looking babies. Um, the first one was a stillborn. It was, it's Is great. Is this the girl? That's her. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's her. And then the, we got one last night that pipped out of the egg. It was having trouble hatching and it, it's a lily white, but it's, it's gray and white. It doesn't look like anything like the reds mm -hmm. do. I don't, I don't know what it is. A lot of I the mean, reds don't hatch red. Yeah. yeah. So, so I, I have red phantom stuff too. And, you know, I, I've hatched a few red phantom lilies. And, yeah, they just look dark when they hatch. They don't yeah. look red at all. So I think they take some time to develop. But my reds aren't, like, I mean, they don't pop out red, red, like, you know, what they are. So, yeah. What they can be, at least. Yeah, whatever these gray ones are, I don't think they're viable. They're not. They're, mm. They don't do well. Mm interesting yeah they're cool but it's hit and miss i mean i have a uh i have a really low expression pinstripe female she's one of the older girls i have two older girls mm. and they throw some of the higher pinned babies that we have mm. uh, and then some of the high pins you just get a variety of them from each one of them i think we have eight or ten females from this red pin project and they all uh, threw a variety yeah that's good i i, I guess i would have considered i would have thought it would have been more consistent but it's just like anything else you know two high ends don't always give you more high end yeah that is true it's just like everything else with crested's they give you more but not all <laughs> yeah 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 exactly you're still going to get some low ends out of it yeah but the nice thing is a low end of this is just like a still a nice red phantom. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Have, I mean, within these white pin, pro, white pin red phantoms, have you hatched a lot of non white pin stuff? I know. Sorry. For no. you, yeah, said, oh, they all have white pinning. No. Yeah. Every, everything. So why do you think, white. why do you think that that line is so dominant in putting that on, like putting those white pins on? What do you think that is? Honestly, uh, that's one of the reasons why I'm holding on to is I, I don't, I don't fully have, I don't feel like I fully understand it yet. I feel like there's something yeah. more at play here that mm. it, it's just not known about. It's too consistent for it to be a normal phantom. Mm. Yeah. Um, you know, and I, we've had red phantoms with, you know, the little Y at the bottom of the tail or, you know, a, a little bit of, dorsal pinning markings but yeah a couple spots and that's normally that's normally all you see from it yeah but i mean a low expression one of these will be a quarter of its body has the pinning yeah 25 30 percent yeah 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 and that's what i would consider a low expression one you know most almost everything is is 50 that would be a low expression one there hmm. that's still beautiful 
Yeah, that's a nice it's one. It's still a good animal. Good, good gecko. <clears throat> What do you what do you theorize? I know we've talked about empty back being potential. I know we've talked about like you know soft scale or super soft or something being at play. Yeah. What's yeah, what's I, kind of the working theory right now? Yeah, I know I know that this these the ones that I have they're all at least soft scale. Yeah. Um, or super, some of them yeah. I know chaos the the blood red one she's super soft. So I know that's that's in the mix as well. Um, mm. I had a couple test pairings, then I paired the male, a couple of the males to some females, but to try to see if I got any empty back markers. But mm. the test pairings I did, I guess the females were empty back. The females I didn't see as being empty back. They they had it in it. I later found out. Oh, okay, so you so already kind of, so. kind of ruined my test breeding for the year. <laughs> <laughs> you need to use ones that were definitely not. Pet, pet for empty. Yeah. yeah. Some, some lineage. <laughs> but you didn't make any supers? No. What, what would that even look like on something that's a phantom that looks all covered already? I, I think I have one. I can't tell yet. I don't know. I'm still learning the whole empty back gene. Mm. It's still one that I, I'm like, is this? Is it not? Mm. I've heard different things. I heard people looking for, you know, little dashes on the tail. Or... I don't. I don't know. About that. <laughs> <laughs> I, know, I know that, like, that was our episode with LM. I, yeah, and I don't know. I mean, I, I, I feel those, like I you know, you can my... you can say, oh, they have hash marks on the tail, and I I get it. Like a lot of them do, but some of them don't. Yeah. And exactly. and then <laughs> there's geckos that are not empty back at all that have them, right. and there's. You know, sables have them and caps have them, yep. and it's like, you man, I don't, I don't, I don't think, I don't think you can just say it's a marker because it, it's almost like when, when all that stuff went down with cap, where the the Y at the tail base, yeah. Yeah, people exactly. were like that, that's a marker, and it's like, well, it is, but it doesn't mean it's yeah, probably a, a it's cap. probably a marker of of the certain animals that were the founding animals for the project, but it's not actually tied to the gene. Like you can make them that don't have the Y yeah. at the base of the tail. It's not, it's not actually tied to the gene where it puts it on every time. It's, it's something that was tied to the original look of the, the phenotype of the animals that made the caps that we see commonly today. So not, so, not a, not the best indicator. It's it, yeah. It, it, it could be. Could yeah. be an indicator, but it's not it's not yeah. necessarily like a guarantee. Yeah. Yeah. Because other genes could potentially be blocking that that marker as well. Like we've we've seen some of that stuff where you know one one gene will block like for example, like in um uh, in sable lily whites or frappuccinos. In, in in caps or in sables they have a they have like a half gray tail and it's different between cap and sable but they both have like a darkened tail with the like streaking or hash marks on it but as soon as you add lily white the tail's all white has no pattern yeah so it's really interesting how addition or removal of a gene can really screw with your your markers that you're using to define. Yeah, so, Lily is a hard one to, to tell if once Lily's involved. Yeah. That's where I really get confused at. Yeah. Yeah, Lily EB is like super weird too. Don't even <laughs> give me credit <laughs> on that. Yeah, you can't tell at all then at that point. Harry's just scrolling your your feed. <laughs> I like those cups. Too. Do you have do you have pictures of any dogs on your feed? Because Harry <laughs> will find know. it if you do. No, we got uh, our, our two little Frenchies are running around here somewhere. Oh, nice! Don't pick them up. <laughs> Harry's gonna want to oh. see them. Oh, it's a girl. It's so sweet. <laughs> oh, that's so fun. That's yeah, awesome. that was at one of the Utah shows. So Did is you your goal? Oh, oh, I was no, just I gonna did. ask on the Red Phantom project. Is yeah. it so? Is kind of the next phase goal of it just um, working on consistency of quality, or what's kind of your goal with it? 
definitely the goal is to, is to refine it, um, see how clean, how nice, how, how far we can extend. If we can consistently get to a point where they're, they're throwing full pins and not broken ones, you know, try to get more side coverage. Um, and then also, you know, seeing what some of the other morphs may, may do with it, you know, what, what Sable would do with it or what, you know, Cap or Frap would do with it. Mm. You guys you know. have you guys have sables and caps yet for to it's, insert it? You do okay. Yeah, we do. Nice. nice. Yeah. We, be- did you get phantoms, or did you get non phantoms? I did not sable sable phantom sable sables. and cap. No, we have non phantoms. Okay. No, I think or yeah, no, I think he's non phantom. He's not a phantom. Our one yeah. of our caps might be kind of phantomy, but no, I think he's just low expression for what he is. Okay. Yeah, Cap can kind of do that. They can kind of wipe out the pattern a little bit and make, yeah. them, look, make them look a little questionable as far yeah. as being I try to think about what he looked like for a second. <clears throat> yeah, that's exciting. Yeah, there's not really a lot of Sable Phantom out there. There's like no. almost, almost none. No, a lot of high patterned ones. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But it makes sense. Korea doesn't really, other than. Other than the dark phantoms, they don't really care for phantoms. <laughs> they phantom. didn't really breed phantom into almost anything. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I never thought about that. Yeah, they're it's all about high, 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 high coverage. coverage. Yeah. But Korea yeah. doesn't have red phantom white pins. I think this is a pretty unique project. So they don't. Yeah. They yeah, have had... they have portholes, but they don't have Yeah. Yeah. We've yeah. had a lot of interest. I think we've had mm. A lot of Koreans reach out to us regarding them. Yeah, don't but sell it to Korea. <laughs> Once you sell it to Korea, so that project is done. <laughs> Hold out as long as you can. Yeah. Hold out. Yeah, yeah. Everyone, everyone gives in eventually because the price. You know, they'll 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 throw a big money for that stuff. You know, but. Oh yeah, we've we've had some ridiculous offers for some of them, but <laughs> I haven't. I bet. Everything. Yeah, yeah. I bet. I bet. Yeah, once you get a hold of it's uh, yeah, it's uh, it's hard to go back on on some of those projects. Um, predominantly, like we've noticed, a lot of them being female, right? As well, mm-hmm. yeah, a lot more female. That's just a heavy gene for female, which is shocking for us because we're always male heavy. Like anything that we hatch out, but yeah. the reds are a little more female predominant. I'd say for what we have, like five or six females that we have still, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, versus yes. two boys. Yeah. Yeah. Versus a couple of males. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> That's our <right>. yay doggy. <laughs> yeah. Harry's favorite. Dogs. <laughs> uh, so fun. Oh. How, how do you guys? This is kind of a off topic. So, being where you're from, do you struggle with shipping and taps, mm. or do you guys have you just adapted to learning how to? you know, use your packing materials and time your drop-offs and you can yeah. still kind of ship through it. We can still kind of ship through it. When you get over a hundred, it gets hard. Um, but we've been able to, you know, we'll drop off late in the afternoon. Mm-hmm. We always use phase 22 packs for, for everything being out here in the desert. And then mm-hmm. in addition to a cold gel pack or heat pack, whatever, whatever way it's going, Hmm. But the biggest issue we're running into here is, I mean, it may leave Vegas and it's, you know, 110 here. And, and then, then it's like Memphis, 40 where it's going. <laughs> and then it's it Memphis and it's 80 at night. And yeah. then, yeah, where it's going to, you know, Wyoming or New York. You know, yeah, then it's 60. So yeah. that, that gets hard when it's, you know, three separate temperatures. I, I kind of try to plan for whatever Memphis is doing. Hmm. Yeah, because I mean, if it's going to get stuck anywhere, it's going to get stuck in Memphis <laughs> or it's going to get stuck in. Well, so do you, do you, all of your packages go through Memphis? Every single one. Yeah. None of them. Go, yeah. None of them go to Indy. Have a couple no, 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 we never. Sometimes did. Oakland. Unless I would like, like if I was going to ship something to Harry, then I could go through Oakland. But yeah. where do I hit Oakland unless I'm going to go north of, a, of, of Nevada? Yeah, the PN, PNW will always go through Oakland. The Pacific yeah. Northwest. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. yeah. 
But I mean, we've shipped, you know, to Arizona and it hits Memphis and comes back to Arizona. Yeah. Oh, interesting. That's yeah. crazy. That's so stupid. Yeah. It, it's ridiculous. <laughs> and it gets stuck in Memphis. And I'm like, uh. stay away. <laughs> yeah. And I'd say recently, if we're shipping five or six, Every time one is being held up, like yeah. at this point, so luckily, buy, buy your insurance. Oh, yeah, it's just it, the shipping it pro, though. I mean, he doesn't have issues, so luckily, that like when someone a customer's worried, we're like, rest assured, they will be okay. Please just pick it up as, as soon as you can when it gets there. Yeah. But yeah, I'll, honestly, I'd say uh, FedEx has been at about an eighty percent rate of overnight actually getting there for us. So it's crazy because they would tell you if you look at their statistics, they'd be like, "We're at a ninety-eight percent." I'm like, "There's no." Well, I ship I ship ten, <laughs> and two or three are lost every time. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's, that's like a thirty percent rate, FedEx. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You guys are at 70%, not 98. <laughs> yeah, they're definitely not, inflating those numbers for them. Yes. Yeah, it's not been good for, for for me as well. It's just so always so many delays, always. It's but crazy. it's hilarious because, you know, we can buy insurance on them and then get our money back on those shipments. And Fed, I mean, it doesn't even change. They're not getting any better. No, I know. they've got How much money are they money. losing? Yeah, you know? yeah. yeah. It's crazy. I, I've had I got a cousin that breeds snakes and he's had situations where the if FedEx finds out that it's a live animal, they uh, won't honor the insurance. Uh, so, so, so he, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I had found out a while ago that, yeah, if they, if they know it's a live animal, they won't honor it. And so I just stopped buying the insurance. Mm. I yeah, haven't bought insurance. Buy yeah. Personally. Mm. Yeah, there's pros and cons to it for sure. Yeah. But it's your only option. So we'll continue to use FedEx because yeah. you can't. Yeah, you can ship UPS. Software. You can ship UPS. Oh, yeah. Okay. I've heard some people. <laughs> yeah, a lot of people. I know like Tiki ships only UPS and they oh. ship a million animals and they ship to hubs or to home. And it's cheap too. UPS. A lot of people. UPS is cheap, way cheaper than FedEx. Yeah. Mm, I heard um I heard LAC Andrew and Sarah they were talking about they're trying to like kind of casually pull people in their palm about whether people would be down to receive you know, receive UPS. via UPS and everyone's like no <laughs> so <laughs> why I guess, I guess FedEx because, sucks why wouldn't they be willing I think because maybe people don't know where the UPS hubs are it's you know, called like, Google Maps just yeah. look yeah. it up with yeah, but one, then you have to one click learn a whole new system of like okay now i got a ups versus fedex and i think i'm not i don't don't call me on this are there more fedex hubs than ups hubs it's there might, like, there might have been before but they keep closing new ones every week mm, okay yeah. fedex is closing know. locations left and right yeah yeah plus a lot of hubs don't even accept live animals for vegas for vegas there's two one that's about 50 minutes from us and one about 70 minutes from us. So we always choose. And then we've had a great experience for the one that's closer anyways. Mm. But for Vegas, I, that's crazy only having two hubs that will accept live animals. Yeah, that's there's it. a bunch yeah. of food centers, but only a couple will accept live animals. Yep. Do you have, do your trucks that deliver to you, are they AC'd? Only if it's the priority shipment. Express. Yeah. yeah. Express overnight is. But, but do they have like good, like ac trucks? <laughs> Cause like more, out here, have like more, more, we're more in bands. Yeah, they're and more in like um, you know, Mercedes or the Sprinter, Sprinter bands. bands. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You should, but, yeah, you should talk to them. Have you guys thought about maybe doing pickups, home pickups? We will not do it. Oh, no, 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 really? We have to take too them down. Yeah, oh. it's just because we're in a rural area that they oh, don't man. always have the express van coming out so they can't like if I seen him and probably handed off my gecko, but I would never do that. I couldn't because I'm like. Yeah. Could never just sit there and wait. Like I go, I'll go drive them. I don't know. I trust myself better than I trust them. Yeah, honestly. yeah, for sure. I'm like yeah. I'll drop off, and I know that they got there, and I gave it to the same. Seriously, the same FedEx lady for the last five years. You know, yeah. <laughs> babies, and she's so excited about it. So I'm like, I just trust them. They, yeah. they handle them with a lot of care. The drivers, they can barely yeah. find our house half the time. So. <laughs> <laughs> And then, so with doing plumbing, I mean, we got a ring doorbell out there and you just watch them. They'll just take the box. You know, there could be a sink or a toilet and they just throw it. And I'm like, hey, that's porcelain. <laughs> it's breakable. <laughs> it's, it's, it's fresh all over it. 
<laughs> We've had a lot of broken toilets delivered to our house when we were remodeling. Yeah, not yeah. a problem. Type it's crazy. Had... Like it was, it's, it was, must have been like we ordered this one toilet, and uh, and like for three different shipments, they're just trying to like send this like toilet to our house and just it's always broken. broken. Yeah, it's crazy. I'm like, how, how much money are you guys <laughs> wasting on these toilets? It's crazy. Yeah. And they've got to lose some money. Yeah, that's why we're like, we're very serious about the hub too because we've yeah. seen our guys just kind of throw it in. I've heard that they see it fragile. They're even a little more rough with it. So we're like, hub pick up only, hub drop off works the best for us. We've had great good luck. I was yeah. talking, so I was over... I was talking to somebody who actually like makes the boxes that a lot of us use. And I was over picking them up because they make them in my my town. Yeah. And I was like, why are the boxes white? And why, you know, like, why could they be black? Could they be a different color? Um, and they're like, they're white because one person back in the day, I think it was Superior Shipping Supply or TSK. Somebody originally made them white. And so that just kind of became what people... Mm -hmm expected like oh reptile ship in white boxes yeah, but they said tender. they said technically like the ideal box if you want your animal to be treated well is to ship it in a brown un Unknown. Un right. unmarked box mm -hmm. yeah like i mean you obviously ego. you probably have to have like your lacy act you know info on the yeah. side of the box but like but nothing they else said boxes. technically the safest box is one that is not <laughs> does not bring attention to itself. Yeah, doesn't stand out. I mean, think if you ever had a cell phone or jewelry or something shipped, it comes in a very basic box. You never yeah. know what's in there. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That is true. They don't want to announce what's in there. <laughs> yeah. so we have like huge signs like reptile, live animal. Creepy, don't drop. <laughs> don't, yeah, this don't side up. This way like, up, yeah. Between don't 60 and 64 degrees. <laughs> there are 10 expensive crested geckos in here. Don't drop them. Hold that location, big old yellow <laughs> sign, yeah. Yeah, oh, my and goodness. here's my website, and here's probably what this thing costs. And <laughs> here's yeah. my business name. All on you got the person who's like so scared of all reptiles are like, oh, they don't want me. <laughs> Even handle yeah. that box. Like I've I've wanted the reason why I asked, I was like, man, I've wanted to do like a fully branded box, like a box, tape, I, I everything. Like I'm like, man, it'd be cool to do like a black and white box with like tape that matches and like all the stuff. I'm like, yeah, I feel like that actually is asking for more problems. I agree. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Just but the presentation, you know, there's some there's some reptile breeders that have just a plus presentation. I mean, you open you that see. box and you you got a, a complete gift box, and <laughs> that matters. You know, I've received some animals yeah. from some people, and and their packaging stood out to me, and I was a repeat customer to those to those breeders. Yeah. That's true. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Once I I opened, uh, I, I've only ever bought maybe one Zen Yix. <laughs> that was thinking Zen Yix too. I was <laughs> I open it. <laughs> the like, lollipops. Just like a bag full of lollipops. Like there's like. <laughs> A million stickers, and I was like, "What is yeah, going on here?" This is like, the, I didn't order any of this stuff, but he just like adds it in there and puts it in there. But you know what I mean? So she goes down and she picks up the geckos from the hub. The kids are in the back seat, and she throws so she them a lollipop. Uh, so now my my kids yeah. know. Like, did you buy a Zen Gex gecko? And they're like, "No." And they're like, "Oh, like if it's not that standard, you've let them down now." That's so funny. no, it's it's amazing marketing, and that you know that's just one more step of customer service sure. we could be taking. Yeah, mm, definitely. Yeah. yeah, you guys are pretty good with customer service. I feel like, like even on your, <clears throat> on your page, you'll take pictures with your guest and, you know, we see everybody, um, you know, people I think buy from you, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So like I'll pull this, and you, your pages is just a bunch of people. I, I think that's pretty cool. You get a- I love doing that because three years later, that guy will say, oh, I bought from you, you know, at the oh. two years ago and, and I got this and I'm back. And the crazy amount of repeat at, at shows is always crazy. Like there's a um, couple that's in Vegas. They have, their goal is to get every species from us, right? And But I'll be like, Justin, don't you remember? Sometimes I have to remind him like, okay, three years ago. Like, <laughs> Justin, <doesn't remember. laughs> and so Justin like, here, look at the Instagram post. Remember this? You guys should pull it up. She's like, you remember this? I'm like, I remember that gecko. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and it makes it so easy. I go through my photos and I'll put like Las Vegas, the location, and I'm like, okay, look at this guy. It was two years ago. And, and it's, like I said, it's crazy how many repeat people come and I'll be like, yeah, I remember 
over this person and they you know it's nice to for them and i don't know i love seeing yeah. these people though i don't know I yeah think it's very sweet. i think, like I think that's awesome. it was her first time buying a gecko and she was so that's oh no they that was the um in korea, the korean couple that I had bought from us right you think so yeah she yeah. got a uh now Emmy and your lovers. Oh, okay. That's our family, actually. That one was. Oh, it's right here. your family. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. That's sweet. Yeah. No, I think that's. Uh, oh, it's Patrick. Patrick. <laughs> yep. Yeah. 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 Nice. Yeah, he's awesome. Oh, this Wasatch, this Tyler. Yeah. Yep. And Spriggan Exotics. We done a couple oh, shows nice. with them in Utah. Hey, June. Yeah. Point. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's fun. I like that you guys. Uh, I like that you guys do that. It's like uh, it shows kind of the community vibes of um, of the shows and kind that's of. That's why we love the shows. I mean, even if it's like slow for us, Justin and I always say like maybe you you kind of like plant a seed because we do have people reach out and say, "Hey, I'm actually ready to buy a leopard." Hmm. You know, even sometimes if the shows are a little slow. They'll, especially like Vegas, we then will meet them at FedEx that someone met us, you know, at, and so I don't know, it's nice <clears> to do the shows for that aspect, but then I also am like, Justin could go home, not do as much work like packing in, packing out, and just list on Morph Market, and sometimes it's as successful, so it's it's hard to like we, always we justify kind of, the shows. Kind of utilize both. Yeah. Uh, we use mm. the shows, our kind, of, our kind of goal is to you know, some of the lower end stuff, the pet quality that gets produced and, you know, excess of males and things like that tend to go more towards the show direction. And then a lot of the higher end or better production stuff will go to morph market. But, you know, they're both a lot of work. The, <laughs> yeah, I, we just spent the last couple of weekends getting everything listed on morph market. Okay, we're finally done. That's, yeah. Yeah, it took them about... Well. That's one of the most hours. dreaded things I have to do is list on Morph Market. Oh my goodness. <laughs> That's not his passion. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Their, uh, their yeah. workflow is kind of whack. I'm not going to lie. Like I'm, the way to actually like make the listings is kind of yeah. weird. It's a lot of <laughs> yeah. I've uh, I've just stopped using Morph Market altogether. I canceled my membership and. <laughs> well, your guys' uh, websites are really nice looking. That's definitely our goal in the next year or two, something like that. But it's mm. a lot of work <laughs> just to make the website. So Morph Market works for now. And the auction is good and bad. You know, for the red, we weren't honestly 100% sure what the market would be. And we didn't want to under, you know, if you put it, buy it now, what if we yeah. could have gotten $1,000 more or something? So we figured, let the people tell us what it's worth, you know, and then definitely... Mm. We got, I think, a little more than we expected. That I think yeah. right around what we were hoping for. But that that aspect of Morph Market is nice because a lot of people are hitting the auctions right now. And so, you know, mm -hmm. but then we have the other side of the spectrum where some of them are going really low right now. And that's $5. Good. We yeah, sold one yeah. for $5 yesterday. $5. Yeah. yeah. No, I yeah. was shocked someone put his first bid was 50 Five. Yeah. He ghosted yeah. us, so he has not paid. Well, what's your what's your ratio of no yeah. payers? I feel like it's really high for most people. I'd say fifty percent. Oh, that's high. Fifty percent don't pay on auctions. No, I no. Say it's that high. It's high. It's I high though. Yeah. Thirty percent. So that's still so crazy. That's so high. <laughs> yeah, we have yeah. pro memberships. So we have four auctions a month. Yeah. Okay. And one out of the four. One out of the four don't, don't pay. And yeah. then you have to get. Wow. A new, and you get a new auction refunded to you, so you can do another one. Correct. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty high. Yeah. I mean, what, I mean, how do they? They're gonna have to like have. They're gonna have to have like. Identity, like. They block them. Confirmation. They're gonna have to have you like load your your driver's license before you can bid, or something. Mm. I don't even know how they do it. Yeah, they gotta find a way to fix that. They ban that IP address from bidding on auctions or something. That's what they said they've been doing, but yeah. they ban them from bidding on auctions, but they'll still let them stay on the they rest of the site. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, we can tire everywhere else. <laughs> they that's, can last you hundred yeah. questions. That's some BS right there, because yeah, they can come and waste your time, or they could buy a gecko from you and charge back you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, definitely. Yeah, I do think though that you do have to have. I, I think it helps that you have an IG presence because. If you're like a random and you post up a morph market auction, you're not going to get any bids on that thing. You know, Absolutely. Yeah. That's so true. I do, I do think that morph market at this point is so saturated with auctions and other things that you have to have other funnels towards 
pointing towards your auction, right? So yeah. your socials <clears throat> are what drive your auctions. Yeah, correct. I mean, because you know, I had animals posted on there for for a year or so, and I sold some stuff on Morph Market, but in general, like if I didn't like tag it in my IG or it didn't play it up, then people typically like wouldn't ping me for certain things, you know, because there's just so many animals on there. So mm. I figure it's yeah. a, a bit of a it's waste for me. So it's presence not. definitely matters. Yes, mm. yeah. So so for what you guys did, I think it's awesome because you guys have this uh, project and then you posted it up, you hyped it up on IG, you pointed people towards your morph market and yeah, you guys did really well on that. So so you guys- the only, reason, the only reason why we were gonna just put, you know, do a reel and say, okay, accepting offers, but then it was private. Nobody could see what it went for. And it was mm. just, it, it was whatever I said it sold for. So we wanted this to be public so everybody could see what it was and it, you know. So then now the next one you could put up for 1500 bucks or 1250 <laughs> or whatever. And people are yeah. like, oh, well that's in line with what the other one sold for. Exactly, everybody saw it. So yeah. and the person yeah. that bought it did say that they would have went up to 2000. <laughs> so <laughs> You know, I talked to that just, person too. Yeah, I talked to that person too. He's like, bro, so, like, yeah, so good what, job, man. What blows my mind, which is wild to me is how many we had like four people reach out and ask would you do payment plans which we were willing to work with some customers they were pet owners pet they mm -hmm. wanted it for yeah. three or four people were bidding on it just for a pet a nice look that was, that's <laughs> hey well we have french bulldogs they weren't cheap so i mean we yeah, yeah. I, get, so, we, I, get yeah. I mean there are there are a good amount of people that want expensive pets because they just want the nicest thing and just want one of it and that's yeah. not a terrible thing, you know? <laughs> a beautiful red in a bioactive enclosure and something like that show show quality looking yeah. in a tank that's sitting in your living room is yeah. worth it, I think. Like a nice fish tank you want it to look mm -hmm. good. Yeah, for sure. It's something that people are coming to look at. But I think what with their next red, we'll still do an auction because this one might be a little more high quality. Wow, than your last one? I'm nice. really pushing him to get... Well, at least one yeah, more we'll, in the next few weeks. More in the next, <laughs> within the next, with the year. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's, yeah. Awesome. That's, more. That's good. That's good. Yeah. Trickle it out. Like, uh, yeah. I like that you guys are kind of like slow playing it and just keeping. We're definitely the... building the hype. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it's good that you're putting legs under the project and. Um, yeah. You guys have a yeah. I feel like it's it's doing well. I, I'm I'm very encouraged by what you guys have done with it. So that's good. Good to yeah, see. Yeah. for everybody. <laughs> yeah. So. Um, as we kind of like wind down a little bit, we usually ask, you know, what what is uh, a piece or two of advice for new breeders getting into the hobby? I do know that it does take some time to kind of build out your, um, you know, your presence and your projects before you get to like you hit your stride. Right. But for for you guys, what would you say new somebody new coming into the hobby? How can they be successful in terms of, you know, even whether or not they want to make it a business, but how can they be successful as breeders? I would definitely say pace yourself. You know, it's not a race. Um, breed what you'd like. Yeah. You know, don't don't breed what's trendy. Breed what what calls your name because that everything I have is something I like, and it makes it easier to go down there and clean every night when when the market's slow or high or however it's at. Um, mm. And 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 grow your social media. Yeah. You know that that those are key points that quality I think, pictures having yeah. the, you know photos that are obviously looking nice clear and not editing them per se but it's taken a lot of time but even when we started off having like a nice backdrop and i don't know i also sell on ebay and it like it shows when your your know your grandpa's taking a picture of his kitchen you can barely see the item versus i have a nice yeah. setup you know good lighting things like that mine mm. is gonna just show well and i can sell it for even yeah. maybe more money it, than that invest, person invest in your craft yeah exactly oh, quality yeah. quality photos is like a huge thing for your presence on social media for listing them online uh i think that's oh. a huge thing yeah yeah the marketing aspect i feel like is pretty bad i, I uh it's pretty important but I, I do feel like you guys have really good customer service too so i think that's a big thing yeah as well for repeat customers you guys are really good at shows you guys are super friendly even before you guys like knew us you you guys were super friendly to us i'm like you're good good people like i really yeah. really like your family and you guys are really sweet so yeah. i think that helps a lot too i think that is probably like the the not saying us versus anybody but i think when we go to a show especially and we go to someone's booth mm -hmm. and 
they're not even standing up or approaching their customers. Yeah. I honestly will never even go back to that booth. So I, I'm always like, mm-hmm. Jess and I are standing, we're trying to smile, you know, like yeah. that kind of draws them in. And then especially even on social media, just answering a person back is like, 90% of the people are like, we just didn't get a response from all these other people. And, you know, I, and I'm not, we're not the type that can always get respond within an hour, but Hey, sorry, it took so long. Just, you know, that kind of customer mm-hmm. service is not, not a lot of people are showing that in the reptile. Not, not everybody is, I guess, you know, yeah, so just being grateful for these customers, even reaching out, even like when they have a ton of questions, you know, that yeah. person, you gave them the time of day, they're like, okay, well, you, they spent, you know, a couple hours now probably going back and forth and it's usually worth it in the end. Cause they want to purchase from you because you took the time to mm-hmm. acknowledge them. You know, a lot of these people that we've that bought from us are now our friends, you know, or like yeah. you guys, it's like, you're like more like family than just someone we see, you know, and yeah. that's how a lot of our customers have became because we, I guess, give them the time of day and acknowledge that yeah. everybody is important to us. Honestly, yeah. don't want to get too big where we're just like, Oh, we don't want to deal with that aspect. We want to always yeah. have enough time for both sides of it, the geckos and the people, you know, it's mm. a good way to look at it. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. It's good. Yeah. So yeah, no, appreciate you guys um, for taking a taking Tuesday morning to <laughs> to hang out with yeah, us. Yeah, I'm like, and, what day is it? I don't. Yeah, know. yeah <laughs> he, he took off the day for plumbing and uh, oh, okay. you know, <laughs> being nice. On, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it's good. Like our our evenings are getting busier and busier. Normally we record at night, and then um we've just been getting busy with family stuff and other shows and stuff. So we're like, oh, yeah. it's nice that you guys could. Kind of chisel some daytime for uh to hang out with us so really appreciate it worked out good because the kids are at school it would have been yeah next to that night it would have yeah, been a different right situation we got soccer and then <laughs> student would have been madness. Like, the kids are very busy after school so this works yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. yeah awesome awesome so yeah we appreciate you yeah, guys thank, thank you guys, guys so much in. um you let us know where, where can people through. find you where can people find you i know we we pulled up your ig already but Yep, so you can find us on our Instagram, on our Facebook. And Morph Market, too. And Morph Market as well. We don't have a web page yet. That's something we're working on. You can even text Soon. and call us in. Soon. <laughs> wow, you guys, I just realized you guys have 137 um, people that rated you. That's crazy. You guys are Morph Market champs. Wow. Yeah, we've been on Morph Market. I think at that time, that present, also a lot of people are just following us. So the second yeah. like we list, I think they're notified. So that does help with having the time mm-hmm. on Morph Market because um, I, I think we have like 250 followers that are like liking the items like you. Yeah. Thank wow. you. <laughs> and so that helps because, I, like I said, I think even like they're being notified when we put some of them, I think, can put that right when we have listed, people are right. They know right away. Yeah. So, That's awesome. Um, yeah, not a lot of people have built out their morph markets like this. And so you guys do a really good job. That's awesome. I, I didn't yeah, mean. I think four or five years and, and then pro members yeah. since they've had that. <laughs> and it helps. Nice. Awesome. Yeah. So reach out to Jenny and Justin on Morph Market, on um, Facebook and uh, Instagram, and they'll they'll definitely answer you guys. They're, they're customer service top notch. So <laughs> they're, they're the best, they're the sweetest. We appreciate so, it. Sir. Uh, <laughs> Jenny, Jenny brings the personal. Well, Jenny, Jenny's the best, Justin, not yeah. so much. No. <laughs> not so much. <laughs> no, Justin's sweet too, awesome. Yeah, so thank you guys, appreciate you guys. Yeah, and, thank you guys um, so much. We'll, yeah, thank you. Um, we appreciate it. Yeah, thank you guys. We'll post up this week on Thursday. By pe- by the time people watch this, it's probably Thursday AM or something. So yeah, oh, we'll cool. uh, we'll tag you in the socials and stuff. So. Oh, thank you. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, thank, thank you guys. Okay. All right. Bye. Bye. See you soon. Bye.